What's going on guys? Welcome back to another video. In this video, I want to talk about Palantir stock, but real quick, I do want to talk about my 14 day challenge. This is a challenge where I will be sending you voice notes and coaching you one on one where you can ask me questions as much as you want is seven dollars a day. The value is absolutely insane. And the reason why I'm doing this is to get to know you more as well as to give you so much value that it makes no sense for you not to join Discord afterwards. There's no obligations, but I am dedicated to 14 days of one on one coaching for seven dollars a day. Insane value. Go ahead and check out the first link in the description if you're interested. The registration does close in just five days. So if you're watching this, it is probably likely about to close. And I'm only going to be doing this challenge about once a quarter because it is very taxing. Now, let's talk about Palantir. Here. So Palantir stock is pretty stable at $21.85 at the moment as I'm making this video. And in early February or mid February, this stock went up a lot. And it's actually a really good candidate for multiple strategies, which I will discuss. I have currently 300 shares. I have sold some shares I actually got assigned on um, one of my contracts. But right now you will see that I have both sell puts and covered call and another sell put. So let's talk about the technical analysis first. So the thing is about technical analysis, the stock is really interesting because it hasn't really moved up a whole lot or down. It's just moving sideways, which believe it or not, is actually a really good thing for option trading. So with volatility being high, which pounds here does have pretty high volatility, like actually if I go into one of the options, I'm going to show you that it does have really good implied volatility. So let's go to, for example, the 22 strike. The implied volatility is very, very high, like 59.87. If I go to a future option, if I go to, let's say, August expiration, volatility is 63. OK, so very high volatility, yet the stock is moving sideways. This is actually a mismatch and a potential arbitrage opportunity. So what does that mean? That just means that there is you know, enough premium out there that if you're an option seller, you're going to be making money. So as an option seller myself, I prefer to just stick to my bread and butter strategy of either selling puts, covered calls, the will strategy. And I'm also doing spreads and other strategies as well. But my bread and butter is literally selling options, selling puts, selling calls. You don't need to get too interesting. You can keep it really boring, very simple and make money just on a stock moving sideways. So this is actually the pattern that I love to see because this is basically not bullish. This is not bearish. This is just neutral. OK, in fact, from about two six. OK, it was roughly like $22. And now it's like two months later or almost two and a half months later, and it's still at $21.90. So as a stock investor, this can be a little bit frustrating. But as an option trader, this is really good. Because if I go to my position right here, I'll show you how to just make consistent income. So for example, I'm up about $555 on the stock and I'm up roughly $478 on the options. So this is what I would do right now um, when the market opens, because I'm making this before the market opens. Since Palantir has gone down a good amount, I would just buy 100 shares. I would literally just go 100 shares. OK, I would spend, let's say, two thousand dollars. If you have a bigger portfolio, then, yeah, go ahead and do 200 shares, 300 shares. Just make sure you're doing it in lots of 100. The reason why you want to buy shares in lots of 100, first of all, just mentally, it looks a lot better. And I hate to see like 72 shares uh, or 72.5 shares. Oh, yeah, that, that's uh, <laughs> not not so fun or pleasing on the eye. But the thing is, um, when you have 100 shares, the biggest benefit you get is you get to sell options one contract per 100 shares. Let's just say I have, you know, 500 shares and I just bought 500 shares. I would just go sell a call and I would pick an expiration day. Look, the expiration day is not that important, actually, because you do get compensated directly in proportion to how many days till expiration. Think about it this way. OK, let's let's just take, uh, for example, May 17, which is 31 days to expiration. If I do roughly at the money option, you can see here I'm getting two dollars, which is almost 10 percent, just almost 10 percent, because two divided by 21 here is going to be like nine percent or so. Now, if I go to an option that expires in 66 days, OK, so this is like two months, you will see here that I'm not getting compensated that much more, but I'm getting this premium up front. So I'm getting paid a little bit more, forty two dollars. And actually, now that I think about it, this is actually why I do monthly expirations. Like you can see here, like there is actually a difference. I said there's not. And what I meant by that, I guess, is that there's not a difference between one to six weeks, one to six weeks. Good. But once you get past six weeks, you do get compensated a little bit less. So, you know, we're getting 242. You're locking in more premium up front, which does reduce your risk, gives you more money today. Um, but at the same time, I don't think it compensates you enough, actually. So after, you know, six weeks, 
like here we're at 66 days, which is like, you know, nine weeks or whatever. Yeah, it's about nine weeks. You're not getting compensated as much. So I would stick to a little bit shorter term, but also you don't want to do too short term. So I don't like like super short term trading. Reason is because, you know, it's just kind of too much work. So if I go to something that expires like ultra short term, like three days, yeah, I can make $47, but then I have to do this again on Monday and again on Monday and the next Monday, right? It's not necessarily that one expiration is better than the other. They're just different. Like, what do you prefer? Do you prefer to be a little bit more active? and take a little bit more risk because the thing is you can sell a 22 strike here and collect 47 dollars and let's say that on friday which you know i'm making this already on a, on a tuesday so once it expires you can do this again but the thing is over the weekend let's say the pound to your stock goes up you're taking some risk over the weekend either the stock can go down or the stock can go up if it goes up then fantastic right i mean you've made money on the stock on a covered call because on a covered call, you own shares. So you would make money owning shares. And then maybe instead of selling a 22, the following week, you would just sell something like a 23. But at the same time, it can also go down. Like it can, after the weekend, it can go to, let's say 21. So now you're gonna be like, oh man, like I can only sell a 21 and a half, or maybe it goes down further. Like, oh, I can only sell 21. So you are taking directional risk when you hold stock through a weekend and you don't have options. So for me, I like that sweet spot of about six weeks. So I would just go for, you know, four to six weeks. So I would go May 17 and then, okay, look, so strike selection. Okay. We talked about expiration day a bit. Now let's talk about strike selection. So how do you actually pick a strike? Like is 21 better? Is 22 better? Uh, I don't know. Maybe 30 is better uh, for some people. Okay. Well, here is my explanation. I always go for around the 30 Delta. So if I go to the 23 right here, the Delta actually here is really, really high. This probably likely means that Palantir has earnings because this delta is a little too high for an out of the money option with a short expiration date. So yes, confirmed. It does have earnings because there is, yeah, I just took a look at <laughs> the delta there. It makes no sense at all unless there's earnings, which there is. Okay. So May, May 6th, there's earnings. Okay. That makes sense. Okay. So given there's an earnings period, you may want to actually change your strategy here. Covered calls are still good by the way, but, um, in an earnings period, if you're bullish on the stock, you want to give it more upside room. Okay. So, I mean, there is a chance that pounds here just like skyrockets to, okay, let's actually go back to May 17. There's a chance that it does skyrocket a bit, right? You may want to go for something like the 25 strike. Okay. So the 25 strike about a 33 Delta pretty good. So if you were to sell this option right here, you would get $97, which is roughly 5% return in 30 days. Now tell me 5% in 30 days, pretty good, isn't it? Like that's amazing. 5% 30 days plus you get upside. You get upside from 2185 to 25. So you can make basically make about $3.15. So $3.15, that's roughly 15% return plus 5% for this option premium. Like that's 20% in a month. Like tell me, covered calls are not profitable. Covered calls are amazing. And they're also pretty safe. Like what can really happen? I mean, Palantir could go up and you can lose your stock. That's not a risk, by the way. That is not a risk because, well, it's a risk of losing your stock, but is your net worth growing or is it decaying? Well, it's growing like you became richer. So like, yeah, you have a risk of losing the stock, but that's like a risk of getting richer. So what's the problem? Yeah, you could potentially leave some opportunity on the table. If Palantir goes to 30, you would make less money, but you would still make money. You would still be smiling. And at the end of the day, like making money is good. Like long term, this is a better strategy than not doing covered calls. Now there's risk to the downside. The downside risk is the stock goes down. But the thing is, if you were to own stock anyways, then it going down, you would still lose money as a stock investor. Except now in this situation, you actually get paid premium of $97. Just looking at the technical analysis, what I think will happen to the stock at earnings, the stock will likely pop about 5% one way or the other. I really don't know which way I try not to predict direction on stocks anymore. You can have some success with it, but on a long term basis, it's really difficult to predict which way a stock will move. Many people think that there are certain indicators that you can use or certain fundamental factors, or you can watch the news, but I pretty much disagree with all of this. If you want to be a successful investor, just do covered calls and selling puts on high quality companies long term. And don't really worry about where the market is going because that's not predictable anyway. So you can spend all the time and the money and still be completely wrong on the direction. So instead, what I think will happen with Palantir is we're going to get a pop either 5% up, 5% down. Now, I will just say, I'll just put it out there. I am a bull on Palantir. I think they have a lot of innovation. I think the company has fantastic management. This is also an AI play. 
That's why I am bullish on Palantir. And in fact, I should have more Palantir in my portfolio. I currently have a very small position and I need to add to this position. I've just been a bit busy. So what I want to do is personally, I'm going to add to Palantir and, you know, as a recommendation or, you know, obviously I'm not a financial advisor. I'm just giving you my viewpoint here. I think covered calls is like the number one strategy right now on Palantir. And I've gotten questions before, like is selling a put better? Is doing a covered call better? Well, actually selling a put ties up the same amount of capital as a covered call. So when you sell a put at, you know, for example, 20. So if I go to Palantir options and I sell a put at 20, right, you are tying up $2,000 right here. It's a very small return, so I wouldn't do that. But here you're tying up $2,000. But if you buy 100 shares, you're tying up $2,100, but you're selling a covered call and collecting some premium, which makes it, you know, a little bit less. But in both scenarios, you're tying up roughly $2,000. I guess in the selling put example, you are tying up just like 50 to $100 less, but that's really not a big deal. So when I look at selling puts versus selling covered calls, the fact of the matter is both are very similar strategies. They're like cousins. They actually look the same on a chart because in both scenarios, tying up capital, you're getting paid premium for a period of time. So in both scenarios, you are equally the same in terms of risk, return, reward, premium, expiration. So, you know, if you had to pick one, I would probably do covered calls on Palantir. And the reason why I would do covered calls on Palantir is because they have earnings. So if you do the May 17 expiration day, you are capturing earnings. Now, if you are going to be selling puts, I would sell puts on something like Apple. So Apple is like one of my really big positions right now. I have been bullish on Apple for some time. And in the past week, there was some, you know, people basically panicking as Apple went down below $168 per share. I did not panic and I actually am making really good money. Like if I go into my history, let's just look at the stock real quick. So it's at 172.38, it pulled up. I have 7,000 shares, quite a lot, $1.2 million and 43% of this portfolio in um, Apple at the moment. So I have $180 covered calls. Now these are showing a slight loss at the moment. That's because Apple is actually showing a lot of signs of bullish momentum and investors are getting fairly bullish on it. But as you can see here, it looks like one day I made quite a lot. So it's, it's, it's going back and forth, right? There's a lot of volatility in Apple actually, which is pretty surprising. You know, typically it doesn't have the most volatility, but let's just take a look at my history right here. You guys already know, I'm, I like to be transparent, I show you my wins, my losses, and really just like everything. Let's just talk about my history real quick and then we'll wrap it up with some more tips. So give me a couple more minutes here. All right, so first things first, let's just go to the more recent stuff I've done. So I sold 70 contracts, uh, 180 covered call for May 17. I got paid $17,000. So that was a pretty good trade. Pretty happy with that. I did sell 1,800 shares at $170 and I didn't actually want to sell Apple, but I had to sell Apple because my account was in margin. There is a right way of using margin and there's a wrong way of using margin. That is beyond the scope of this video. But if you want a video on margin, just comment down below and let me know what questions you have about margin. I do read your comments and I'm very happy to see them. So I'll make another video on that. But um, buying Apple at 177, I closed out an option trade here. So I closed out an option trade that I have previously sold and I have sold many, many covered calls, which were all actually profitable. I think all except for one. You can see here, I sold 552, 2.3K, $6,000, 1100, 1100, 5,000, uh, etc. I've been making not the most money, but some money on Apple just by selling options. Okay. It's pretty consistent, but I do have a big Apple position. You would think I'm making more, but I'm fairly risk averse. So I'm trying to just make a little bit rather than. Um, you know, being aggressive and, and, you know, going for more than I can uh, get, right? Biting off more than I can chew, basically. So I did sell 1,800 shares, and then I also had to sell um, 1,200 shares. That's also because of uh, margin. I was slightly in margin even at this point. So I did get rid of about half a million dollars of Apple. But overall, I'm still very, very bullish on Apple. And I'm going to keep just selling covered calls. Like I have, let's see, 70 covered calls. That's like quite a lot. Now, currently, this is actually worth a lot because it's like $3 per share. So if I actually click into this option contract, you can see here that the market value is negative $20,000. So I'll be pretty excited as time decay kicks in. This will actually be fully in my favor, fully, 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 which is pretty nuts to think about. But yes, this will actually be fully $20,000 mine as long as Apple stays below 180, which I think it will. Even if it goes beyond 180, I'm just going to roll this position. 
If you want to watch a really good video on rolling, I'm going to leave it on the screen right now for you guys to watch.